Hey everybody, how's it going? Facial hair, orange helmet, baggy clothes, it can only mean one thing. I've gone out on my mountain bike for the day. This is my Lapierre Ease SD AM 9.2 and it's quite different to the one that I had previously. If you think back to October 2020, where has that time gone? I had its predecessor which was, I think it's fair to say a more expensive model, had slightly higher end equipment on it, but there's some major changes between that one and this one. I've set this one up completely differently to how I was using that one and the types of rides that I've been doing have transformed completely from how I first set up the old one. And that's because I've discovered my favorite way to ride the e-bike is to ride it on the days when I otherwise wouldn't be riding. So on recovery days. So instead of going out on the long travel e-bike and trying to do jumps, which I just can't do. I need to accept this. Grew up riding on the road, spent my entire life riding on the road or riding peddly cross-country rides. I need to accept that that's where my forte lies. So I've set this up for doing exactly that and I've had so much fun doing it and it's completely brought to life riding e-bikes for me. I'll talk you through the bike. If we look at it closely, we have, with the same frame as before, the Fatsua motor has been updated ever so slightly. So it's now the Fatsua Trail 50 motor. I think there's slightly more torque, 60 newton meters of torque. Has three settings, a 252 watt hour battery. And one of my favorite things about it is if I ever do feel brave enough to go and do big jumps and just ride down hills and do uplifts or that sort of thing in a bike park, I could use the storage tube, which can be substituted in instead of the motor and the battery, which is in there. And that'll save around four kilos, I think. It's really quite handy, actually. I use it with the kids. Sometimes I put food in there if I ride with my little boy, that sort of thing. Going back to the bike, sorry. Full Shimano XT group set, so that's XT rear mech, cassette, chain, uh, brakes as well. 203 millimeter rotors, they bite really well, although I did manage to contaminate one of the pads, so I had to swap them out, but actually the rotors cleaned up really nicely. Up on the handlebars then, it's again XT levers and uh, shifters. Lapierre's own brand bar and stem along with grips and they're really grippy, I like those. They're nice and thick. On the large and extra large models, the grips are that little bit chunkier. Then on the medium models, we've got a Physique Adon saddle, which is one of those stumpy little saddles which has become really quite fashionable, especially on the road and on cross country bikes and things like that. But you're starting to see them more and more on e-bikes as well. And in fact, if I reach around the back of the saddle, yes, has the little clasp, which is designed especially for pushing e-bikes apparently. Fox 36 forks on the front, 29 on the front, it's a mullet bike. So on the front it's a 29er, they are 27 and a half plus forks. On the back it is full 27.5. So 29er up front, two and a half inch high roller two from Maxxis, which is one of my favorite tires. I know not everyone's a massive fan, but I've always enjoyed riding those. But where I live, this terrain, it suits it really perfectly. So there's no reason to use anything else really. Again, high roller two on the back. 27.5, I think, I should have checked this, shouldn't I? They're Lapierre's E wheel set. They're an aluminum wheel set. I'm fairly th certain they're 35 mil wide. I should check that. Loads of spokes, nice and true as well. When I say nice and true, I say that because I've set it up soft and I have hit a few things. Forgetting that. But two and a half inch tires, I'm not that heavy. As I said, I'm not a huge, not a huge, how are you gonna phrase that? I treat my mountain bikes a little bit differently to how I treat my road bikes, probably because I'm not ever gonna reach the levels of abuse that these are intended to achieve, I suppose. E13 cranks, 170 mil, which is nice. It means you're not getting too many pedal strikes as you're riding. I've put my own relatively budget Shimano cleats and pedals on there just because you go through them so quickly. We have a lot of mining waste where I like to ride, which means that when you're riding, and you go home, you rinse the bike off, it sort of sits on the pedals and it, it will eat away on the ferrous metals, unfortunately. We have a dropper post here. And the nice thing about the dropper post is it is adjustable. So if for whatever reason you wanted less travel, maybe you're putting lights there or something like that and you don't want it to drop and raise as far as it could do, you can adjust that. I think it's a 170 mil drop on the large model, which is huge, which is really good actually, because it is quite high off the ground, a large bike. I'm probably as small as you want to be to ride that bike at one meter 78. But for me personally, it works really, really well. Especially when you come to a style, you have to climb on and off the bike, that sort of thing. So the Fatsua motor is Bluetooth compatible. It can connect to the app either on your phone or if you use a, uh, a Garmin head unit, you can connect it up to that and you can read power data as well. So if you wanted to be really strict and take it out and ride, you could use it for training and monitor the exact intensity that you're working at, which I think is a really good thing for e-bikes, especially 
as someone that likes to compete still as an athlete, if you want to take your training seriously, you can use this bike, keep below those intensity levels and use it on a recovery ride. But as I said before, I think my favorite way to use this bike, set it up nice and soft so it absorbs and feels like a magic carpet. Don't set it up like it's intended for, you know, it's, it's a big travel bike. It's a long travel, 160 travel, 160 millimeters travel, which I know travel is increasing these days. Cross country bikes now have 120, 110 mil travel. I still view that as long travel because I'm never gonna make the most of it. But if I set it up soft and use it for fun, then I can start to really feel the bike come alive beneath me and really enjoy it to its maximum. The other thing we use this bike for, rather than the full powered Boshi bike, is actually for filming. So when we're on the road doing work, Micah will ride this with a camera and a gimbal in her hand, ride alongside me and she'll film off the side of the bike. And it works so well for that because it's a little bit quieter. So if we're using any audio, a little bit quieter than the Bosch system that is. If we're using any audio, that means you don't quite hear the motor blow the tires up nice and hard it's a very light bike it's only 20 kilos with the motor and the battery meaning power to weight agility things like that for Micah because it is very big for her obviously throw some flat pedals in there really easy to go lift it in and out the car in and out the van makes life super easy whereas the Bosch powered motorbike motorbike e-bike is that that few kilos heavier it just makes it that little bit less agile to throw it around in and out the car Micah on and off it also, the brakes on this are just so good compared to any of the brakes on any of the other bikes we have in the shed, actually, which makes it just super safe, super easy to get on. Even the kids ride it. They think it's hilarious. My little boy, he's only 10, jumps on there and rides away. I found myself riding this bike more and more, starting off in full power mode when I leave home, up, out the town, out the hills. Then as we get into the countryside, I feel that I'm warmed up a little bit. I can drop down through the zones. I know a lot of people advise that when you ride an e-bike, you start off in eco mode and then you build up as the ride goes on. But actually, I really enjoy starting in the full power mode and then easing into the ride. And then as you're getting home and you're fully warmed up, I don't ride it long enough to really fatigue myself because an hour and a half at the most really is what I use that bike for. I have a spare battery which I could carry so I could double the length of the rise if I really wanted to but on eco mode that battery will last for around uh, 60 kilometers somewhere between 55 and 60 kilometers is the most I've done on eco mode on that battery obviously the harder you ride the more time you spend above the assistance level the more efficient the battery life is going to be if you use it a full power mode and again ride hard about 27 kilometers around 700 meters of climbing which I think is really good when you consider it's only a 252 watt hour battery but you could carry a second one and then carrying the second one removes that battery range anxiety and carrying that second battery removes that battery range anxiety, which means you can just go out, have a really nice ride, a really long ride. I'd love to know though, do you have any questions about this bike and how I might use it, how someone might use it? It's one of those blurred lines bikes where you can take out that motor, take out the battery and use it as a normal bike as well. I have taken it to a few bike parks, only in Cornwall. We haven't done much traveling this summer, unfortunately. Any reasons for that? And it's really confidence inspiring. It's really good to ride this bike on technical trails. Trails that I could ride on my cross country bike, but perhaps first time off, I don't quite dare do it. So I ride them on this first, build up the confidence, then translate it across to the cross country bike. And then in time, you know, even do that on the gravel bikes. I think that's one of the big things that I've really noticed over the last couple of years. Having the availability of different bikes to ride, I've realized that actually a lot of my rides are quite similar. The only thing that probably changes is the confidence and the pace that I ride them. And that's quite interesting because I thought to start with, oh, we're gonna go out, we're gonna push it, try and learn some big jumps and big drops. But the pleasure didn't really come from that. It came more from just still being able to ride if it was at the same speed, even if it was really wet and sloppy conditions because you're on a heavier bike, it bites into the corners better or on a day where you just don't have the energy or after illness, after recovery, things like that. That's when these bikes for me really come alive and that's when you can really enjoy an e-bike. I'm a massive fan of e-bikes. I've probably waffled on enough. It is just, it's just brilliant fun. Hopefully I've done it justice in the little clips that you've seen. It's one of those colors. It's really hard to photograph, to film. I've tried it against the old buildings that are just over there. And again, it just doesn't quite set itself off. 
I tried it against the purple heather. It's really hard to stand it up in the middle of nowhere. That was a challenge, but I think it's amazing. When you see it up close, the vibrance of that orange against the green, I think is really, really cool. Anyway, any questions about the bike, drop them in the comments below. I'm gonna go and enjoy the rest of the ride. Got an audience down there, probably wondering how I got up here. I certainly wouldn't have ridden up here on the cross country bike today, not with these energy levels. Thanks for watching, see you next week.